the article written the next year i have it right in front of me yeah every name is a man the very next year what happened why were these women not remembered the next year when you wrote about the great pallavi vidwangar and that was the time when pratama is becoming the first woman to have challenged the male bastion as singing pallavis now a lot of these things may not be done purposely in fact they are not done purposely i think that is the most important aspect of discrimination that we should remember it is not always some planned strategy it becomes so normalized in our reaction and in our being that it just goes by and forgetting is part of that system and so dharakoti sister is forgotten we don't even know these names unless you read books you don't even know these people existed nagar travan now we know a little bit no so therefore they were also not just singing compositions they were also actively participating in what you could call the create creative or the imaginative sphere of what we call carnatic music including what is considered a male bastion which is the complicated mathematical pallavi right so now there's another interesting thing you know when i first uh, accidentally bumped into changing the way we present carnatic music you know you feel very egoistic about it right because you think you're some big great pioneer after a while this truth humility and all is uh, is there but if any anybody tells me if i am not honest to myself but didn't think that one morning got up and said my god man i've shaken this people of course i felt that way that's a that's a fact and that's a reality but always when you feel that way it's good to read something that knocks you down and puts you down and that happened to me which also i'm very happy about so bhatkande the great musicologist from the north came to south india now he came to south india for his very important nationalistic plan his plan was simple he believed that he has to create it create an indian music okay and he very simply thought the brains are in the south and the sound is in the north he hated the way carnatic music sounded by the way he himself has described it so when he comes to the south i i i don't remember reading his memoirs if i i make a make a mistake here or there but i remember he was talking about climbing these stairs in Ch- in in madras i think it was somewhere in uh, town what is known as the northern parts of what is madras today and going to this first floor somewhere to listen to nagaratnam and he says something intriguing and when i read that i said mr krishna you should just keep quiet because he says she was singing and then the audience stopped and say, said can you only sing alapanas this is 19 o 605 or these women were already doing something 100 years before and at least 50 years before i was born and even described and says the alapanas sounded like kannada bhairavi and pilu in his in hindustani years so it's also important to recognize that there were multiple performative forms they were uh, inada sisters who used to mainly master javalis they did not sing kalpana swaras so this whole these are very important things this whole notion that carnatic music presentation needs all these boxes ticked all these elements there then it is accepted as a form is a very upper caste brahmin male creation without any doubt these women were doing are taking different elements of it or shall we say the elements that they were celebrating and presented it imagine in 1906 1905 nagartramal just sing our raga alapanas it was not a beta kid somebody so it was a performance a public performance so it is also important to realize that from this tradition of the nadaswaram and the devadasis came multiple ways of even presenting this art form okay which we have lost which we have also lost so you find all this very very important and uh, very interesting in terms of its aesthetic contributions of the devadasi community of the women to the carnatic sound and the carnatic idea now this is where the concert structure becomes a very important aspect to think about uh, if you look at the time period the time period is when nationalism is definitely on the rise when there is a demand to go back to hindu antiquity 
to shall we say retrace our pride in at antiquity present it as a challenge to the white person and therefore lot of transformations were also part of a social political battle as much as they were aesthetic right this is a time also when the devadasi social position was completely on the trajectory downwards starting from shall the late 19th century when finally the act was passed if my memory is right in 1947 the anti notch act now here are these women who were celebrated as being the most important aesthetic elements of society who were then just completely reduced to be called prostitutes now those who know tamil the abuse that is used in tamil now is tevadiyal okay it's actually devar adiyal the one who surrendered to the lord the transformation of that one word from devar adiyal to tevadiyal describes what happened to the community of artists in that one word you can actually understand the tragedy that has taken place okay and there's no doubt these women were being were being abused there's no doubt that they were being uh, used by men there's, i mean that those are there's no doubt but the problem is that the social movement ignored the aesthetic element of these people it ignored that they were bearers of this art form for generations and centuries and that while social political reform was essential what about preservation of a continuity of an aesthetic tradition was not even part of the discourse right now keep this in context and parallelly you have tyagaraja emerging as a very important figure again these are very interesting opposing things happening at the same time which are choreographing carnatic music very fast tyagaraja passes away in 1847 okay and the thing was tyagaraja's why would it tyagaraja's kirtanas become more popular because there was a great overlap of harikatha and tradition with tyagar in the tyagaraja singing tradition his shishya parampara had people who did both <coughs> they would do harikatha and they would sing what you could call just concert now what the concert had in its content is a different discussion altogether this overlap of the two made tyagaraja's composition extremely popular okay you could sing tali se ram chitta do anywhere any story you can fit in almost any tyagaraja kirtana it will it will fly and these harikatha vidwans were using on that so tyagaraja then becomes this emblem of a very important pure tradition against the backdrop of the caretakers of this tradition who have now been considered impure and negligible now if we don't see this parallelly we are missing something very serious so the narrative of the devadasi does not fit into the new narrative of the purity that is being created okay now in this juxtaposition that happens one narrative is removed and the bhakti narrative completely takes over the notion of the music entire because any idea of shringara being the main body if i may specify means you're bringing the notion of the body you're bringing the notion of sexuality you're bringing the notion of impurity because in the in the brahmanical tyagaraja tradition the notion is of purity morality of cleansing oneself which is which is seen it's not necessarily is but is seen as being opposite to the devadasis transformation our devadasis uh, condemnation as prostitutes of course in all this the men had no repercussions they went on with their life as they always did it was these devadasis who had the repercussions now in this bad drop is when the concert format is happening now that itself becomes very interesting this is what we call the main sub main all these notions are being formed right we have all these these tags we attach the main body of the concert then is determined to be only bhakti right um it automatically becomes that becomes what you want to showcase as the oldness of this art form you know you want to showcase that as that the tradition of the art form that which is part of it but need not be important is either placed right in the beginning as a warm up or is pushed to the end towards a lighter side of exit but the heart and soul becomes this 
Now, very easily you can counter argue and say, why was it Kshetriya Padam not thought and so? If you can sing Oranga Sai, if you can sing Ma, Ma Janaki, if you can sing uh, every Mata Venu, you can sing Bala Venave, you can sing any of them. Because it was uncomfortable to be saying that. Okay? So, please remember that there are these things that are also parallelly happening in which the women are slowly but steadily, especially Devadasi women, their voice is aesthetically being removed, not only physically being removed. Right? So, then what happens? But we all know that these women had so much music in them. So, one thing about that is that you make sure that is not lost. So, all these men and went and learned from these women. Parur Sundramayar learned from Vina Dharamal. Mushi Sundramayar learned from Vina Dharamal. They went, you know, they were learned from Brinda. Little later, learned from Brinda. So, they became sources very similar to how the Nattuvanas became the sources for Bharatanatyam. The Devadasi women here became the sources for by then the controlling Brahmin male. I'm stressing it's not just Brahmin, Brahmin male is very important here. Okay? So these movements are changing the entire nature of performance, the sound of the music, all this is happening, right? Now, there is also an interesting social story here which I will bring in. Is the story of Nagratraman. I mean, if there is a pre, I mean, a first person who really challenged the fiefdoms of the men in the 20th century in the Carnatic world, it should be Bangalore Nagratraman. Uh, she is not celebrated as much as she should be celebrated. She was against the anti-notch movement, by the way. She did not like the uh, anti-notch movement. In fact, she, I think, if I remember right, she had even started a campaign to stop it. Unfortunately, she failed. And her argument was, this is this is our life, this is our music, this is our art. You can't take this away. You must remember here that the male members of their community, that is the Natvanas, <coughs> did not have a problem with anti-notch movement. They supported it, in fact. Because for them, for the first time, and there, there was a completely matriarchal kind of society where the women had power. They were very happy that the demolition of the system would remove the power from the women and only the male would get the power. So it is not, it is within their community also, they had no support among the men. If you see who are the people who survived the anti notch movement, it was more the men of the family rather than the women of the family, barring a few exceptions. Right? So, Nagaratramal is a fascinating story. She is a musician, she is a Harikatha exponent, she is one of the earliest people to put out records and she is a fighter and uh, she writes, she has written very erotic, she's published a very erotic book for which was, I think if I remember right, was banned at that point of time. So she is an amazing woman and she in her dream is told that she must find Tyagaraja's Samadhi. Now Tyagaraja died in 1847. Uh, I, I think in the initial years there were just this, uh, the pujas done by his various disciples. Then later, uh, what happened was Sundra Bhagavatam, Krishna Bhagavatam, Bhumiyarpuram school start doing, with the help of the Tillistanam school and other schools, start doing an aradhana for him. Slowly it grows to a five day aradhana. Then Malakota Dogo, Gonsami Pillai, who is a very famous violinist, joins in. And anything that grows like this means there will be a fight at some point of time. There is no doubt. So what happens is Ramayangar's two students, Narasimha Bhagavatar and Panju Bhagavatar, take over. Now these two have these two get into a big fight. Uh, the fight divides, makes two groups. One is called the Periyakachi, one is called the Chinakachi. So the party concept existed uh, much before independent India. So you had a Periyakachi and a Chinakachi. Now, there were multiple differences in the Kachis. One was also a question of how do we celebrate Tyagaraja's memory. The one Kachi felt that the religious elements was the most important part. That is the Aradhana. The other said, he is a musician. He should sing. That is more important. So, Malakata Gonsam Pillai was part of that group. Then, uh, uh, after certain point, Sulamalang Vaidhinada Bhagavatar becomes a leader of the group that is more into the religious uh, rituals. In all this comes in this woman because she had a dream. She finds the samadhi. She buys the land. She builds the mandapam. Everything. 
and that time the periy kachi supports her. That is Malakota Goen Sami Pillai is supporter, and she does everything. And guess what happens? When she gets on to on the stage to sing, the men refuse to accompany her. So what does she do? She says, "Go to hell." Next year she does an all woman aradhana for Tyagaraja. So now from two aradhanas there are three aradhanas happening. <laughs> two men groups and one woman. It's very important to place all this in the time period. Come on, nineteen twenties here, and we're talking about these very powerful musicians. And this woman says, "No, I bought the land. I did it. I will do my own. If you guys and she found that samadhi for you. If she was not there, we won't have our aradhana happening today. And but she, when she gets on stage, the stalwarts. I think it was uh, Gon Sami Pule and Arigi Nambi Pule, both get off stage. So." There is this incredible lady whose statue now you will find in Tarviyar on the other side. If you go to Tarviyar, most of us don't go to the other side. Right opposite the Sanadi is Nagarathamma statue, but Nagarathamma is forgotten. She is entirely forgotten from the narrative of Carnatic music as a, such an important person in the way we have built even Tyagaraja's story. Right. So you have all this happening and. Parallelly, you have Veena Dharamman. So I want to bring another element to the sense of aesthetics here. I don't want. I'm purposely going to the aesthetics because I don't want this to be just a social story. Now Veena Dharamman has these Fridays, the way she performs. The who's who of the city have to be there to listen to her. I think by the time she she could see, she was almost blind, and she would play, and all the great businessmen, the musicians would all go. But when she died, everybody forgot her. Isn't it? This is, a, this is a very, very interesting. I think there was a school which was started in her name, but then that floundered, and that also got closed in a few years. Okay. So Nagarathamal is not there. There is no road in. Uh, there, sorry, Veena Dharamal. There is no road in, in name of Veena Dharamal. There is no road. Now Veena Dharamal's music is an important aspect. There are multiple ways you can actually discriminate. One is to say it's useless. Other is to say it's too pristine. Both work. Veena Dharmar fell into the latter category. You have a concert form, concert form which is being created by the men, which is this idea of this very machismo-driven kind of music, uh, which is being structured. And you have a contrast of Veena Dharamal, which is considered highly sophisticated, very nuanced. You know all these words that seem celebratory, but actually are not in this context. You know it, it's so it's not. It's good for like chamber music. When anybody says something is good only for chamber music, it's not a compliment. It means that it cannot have access to a larger group. So in that you are also framing the aesthetic sense which you want to cultivate in the larger group by default. You are saying this is the aesthetic sense that I am cultivating for the larger group. This is the aesthetic sense that will not work for the larger group. We are saying that Veena Dharamal's aesthetic sense becomes irrelevant to the larger group. So she still becomes a source. So she is a source to learn for the men to then perform that to the larger group in big audiences. Now there can't be worse, a better example for what appropriation really means than this. We have all done it. It's the truth. The men did it. They took compositions from her, the rare compositions from her, learnt it, and they presented on the biggest stage. There are some old recordings, some seventy-eight uh, RPMs of it. I think now it may be on YouTube. Please go listen to her playing the Veena Bhagavatam's exquisite musicians. So even the sensibility of what is nuance, what sophistication is applicable to what space, are things we should think about. I'm not saying space does not contribute to it. Definitely not. But how much is it space? How much is a different kind of choreography? Choreography that is being cultivated is something we should definitely inquire because then we are almost erasing a certain kind of music being part of main stage. It is like today saying Veena cannot be performed in big large audiences. How is it different from that? <coughs> People say that today. Veena is good for chamber. People say it today. How is this different from that? It's very similar. So there is also a discrimination of this kind of an aesthetic which is happening, not just the women, but that sound of the women, 
the voice of the woman the tone of the, of these women is also being erased now i'll come to the four most important four women i would like to talk about how much time do i have oh 12:30 oops sorry 